everybody, my name is Wendy Lezwane, also known as Takyo, and this is my channel on self-studying the Japanese language. This is the third video. Um, to the playlist learning self-studying the Japanese language that is if you're a returning viewer I'd like to say thank you very much for watching all my previous videos and if you're a new viewer I'd suggest that you click on the links below and um, It will help get a better um, context into what my channel is all about But um, as you've seen from the title, um, we'll be learning katakana in under 12 minutes so, first thing I'd like to say is Yoku Tekimashita to one of my subscribers, Classic, for noticing a mistake that I had made in my um, previous video. Instead of saying diagraphs, I kept on saying um, diagrams. So I'd like to clear up that confusion. And thank you very much, Classic, for noticing that mistake of mine. And um, I really appreciate you guys actually like paying attention to what I'm saying and correcting me um, when I'm wrong. Um, it really shows that you're really paying a lot of attention to me. And yeah, thanks to all you guys who keep on um, commenting and giving me like um, encouraging comments and yeah, and tweets and Instagram everywhere. Um, thank you very much for that, guys. So, katakana in under 12 minutes. Um, just to give you a checklist, what we'll be going through is all the katakana characters, the diagraphs, um, nobashibo, hand duck ten and duck ten, how to use them in katakana. So um, in the first list we have obviously the vowels which are a, i, u, e, o. So um, with these, um, I forgot to mention something very important as well in my previous video. And that is stroke order, um, how you actually write the characters. I think it's very important for you guys to actually know how to write the characters, which stroke is first. And yeah, um, it's good to actually practice the right way. So just from these characters alone, I can already see like we can make up one word like ow, which means um, blue. In the next column, which is the um, K column. In the K column, we have ka, ki, ku. Ke, ko. Before moving to the K column, there's something really special about these characters, and it all starts with the vowel U. The vowel U has, um, they actually can have a duck ten. And since um, Japanese people can't really pronounce uh, the V sound, it's more of a B sound. So you can have um, diagraphs just using the vowels and the U character itself can have diagrams as well so to make the sound um like we you can put the u character and then the small e character in front of it then it has a sound we so same thing with the u character you can use any of the other vowels to make it have its own um diagraphs so u can have um its own diagraphs so u with the duck 10 becomes a b or v sound so B and the B and the A sound are more like um, ba, B, B, bo, and we move on to the K column, which is ka, ki, ku, ke, ko, and it's very special. It can have um, a duck ten. So ka becomes ka, ki becomes gi, ku becomes ku, ke becomes ge, ko becomes ko. So what I'm going to introduce now is something called the nobashibo. So it basically almost looks like a hyphen and you put where you put it um whatever character is before it um you eleng elongate that character. So instead of um duplicating each character or writing two characters side by side, for example to say a ah, so that would be like um two a ah characters and instead of doing that you can have one a ah and the nobashibo and it would be like a ah then an example using the K column, for example, if you want to write the word cake, but in katakana, it would be keiki. So that's the katakana character ke, then the nobashibo, then the katakana character ki. So it's keiki. It's, you can quite hear that um, ke is a bit elongated, then ki is very short. So keiki. Cool. Moving on to the S column, we have sa, shi, su, se, so, and as you know, it has the duck ten. It becomes um da, ji, zu, de, do. 
Ko, and then we have the T column, which is Ta Chi Tzu Te To, and with the T column, um, you can have a dark ten as well, and then it becomes Ta Ta Chi Tzu Te To. Then we have the um, N column. The N column is not very special. It stays the way it is. It becomes Na Ni Nu Ne No. And a quick word you can make with the N column is the word Nani um, to mean what. Then we move on to the H column, which is one of the most special ones because it can have um, three sounds from one character. So when you put um, the duck 10 in the H column, usually it's just Ha, he, th, he, ho. But with a duck ten, it becomes ba, bi, bu, be, bo. And then with the han duck ten, which is the um the circle looking like a thingy, it can become um pa, pi, p, pe, po. And with that alone, you can already um make a word. For example, um beppo, which is um a character from the anime. One piece, um, it's basically a talking bear that can fight, which is pretty rad. But anyway, we move on to the M column, not very special, but um, it's ma, mi, mu, me, mo. Then it's the Y column. The Y column is what we use only in hiragana for the diagrams, but it's different with um, katakana for diagrams. In katakana, you can either use the vowels or you can use the Y column. You take all the consonant sounds that end with E and so basically it's ki, shi, chi, ni, hi, mi, ri, gi, ji, and so forth, but they become kya, kyu, kyo, sha, shi, sho, cha, chi, cho, nya, nyu, nyo, hya, hi, hyo, mya, mu, myo, ria, ryu, ryo, kya, Kyu kyo, cha chi cho, pia piu pio, pia piu pio, and that's all for the Y column. And the next column that we have is the R column. And in the R column we have ra ri ru re do. And then finally we have um wa o and m. And um. With all these katakana characters, I'd suggest that you actually start practicing words that you've maybe heard or things that you um, want to write down. Because usually with katakana, it's mostly used as um, to write down loan words or very like um, sophisticated uh, words. So yeah, have fun with that and thank you guys for watching. Please comment below. Um, any tips on how I can better my videos, um, where I can improve in the Japanese language or resources you think um, might be use useful to this community that I'm building right now of like-minded people who want to learn the Japanese language and who are very passionate about Japan. And yeah, another thing that I'll suggest is that um, even though you started to learn the Japanese language, um, never forget why you're actually doing it. Um, in some way or form, Keep on doing what you do that makes you actually love Japan even more. If it's watching anime, so be it. If it's watching other YouTubers like Explore Japan, so be it. Um, one of the channels that I really love is the Abroad in Japan channel. And it's one of my favorite um, Japan vloggers. Like Chris Broad is like so amazing. I love that dude. But yeah, there's so many other channels you can watch. Um, that can help you um, better understand um, the Japanese language and culture. So, that's all from me today. I'm learning all katakana characters in under 12 minutes, and it was a pretty quick video. So, next week, um, this is when we're really starting um, getting deep into like uh, the Japanese language. We will be doing greetings and a little bit of kanji, not that much, but yeah, it's gonna be really intensive. Thank you all for watching. Um, please, if you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button. Share with your friends. Um, comment below. I love engaging with you guys. If I said something wrong, please correct me. And um, yeah, let's learn Japanese together. Ja, mata ne.